Welcome to another Asa Aboy Asa Academy webinar. Today's webinar is going to be on how to order and price Sargent hardware. My name is Russell Corvo and I will be your lead instructor today. You, during this session, your lines will be muted. However, you can submit questions as we go along. Just simply use the question and answer icon at the bottom of the page and we will save time at the end to answer your questions. Also, within 24 hours, this uh, webinar will be available to be viewed again at the Asa Abloy, web, at the Asa Abloy Academy website. Also, within 24 hours, you will receive an email from Asa Abloy Academy showing your proof of attendance for this webinar. And that can be proof for your employer or for industry association partners such as DHI or LOA for industry CEUs. In addition, Asa Ablo Academy has over 50 online courses that are available all at no cost. Just to get started, simply start an Academy account and start learning at your own pace. So today we're gonna to start talking about Sargent Hardware, how to order and price Sargent Hardware. Okay, let's just wanna make a quick change. Okay. So, this is the Sargent facility in New Haven, Connecticut. I just thought it would be good to take a good look at it. And it's always good to see because it's a huge, it's a huge facility, but you really can't get a good view of it from this angle here. You can get a better view when you see a top view of it. And there's a top view of it from the top down. Sargent is a full line manufacturer. They manufacture exit devices, mortise locks, cylindrical locks, uh, cylinders, and all types of locks and the accessories needed for these locks. When it comes to Sargent catalogs, one thing they do is the regular catalog for the, the mechanical products also contains the options for the electromechanical products also. So if you're ever looking for an electrified mortise lock or an electrified exit device, or you're looking for some monitoring options, all of that's gonna be found in the regular mechanical catalog, okay? Asa Abloy has separate catalogs for their access control products. And they do offer a wide variety of access control products, which we're showing you here. Each one of these catalogs is not based on a product type, but it's more or less based on the technology being used. On the technology being used. Um, each one of these catalogs is complete. So say if you're looking at the Harmony series, in that one catalog, you're going to find all the information for cylindrical locks, mortise locks, exit devices with the Harmony series options included. Each one of these catalogs is complete and contains all the products for this particular series. So you only need one particular catalog. When it comes to their price books, they have one price book for all the mechanical and electromechanical options. And this includes the standalone access control products, such as keypad locks. Then they have three other price books, which are for their access control products. Okay, these are, uh, these can be used by people who are certified to sell our access control products. So next we're going to take a look at how you order the products. Let's see. How you order the products. So with Sargent products, all our products are pretty much ordered in the same manner. The way it's done is we always list the options first. So the first example we're gonna look at is exit devices. So in this example here, the product we're talking about is exit devices. We always specify options first. An option is any variation to the standard product offering. In this example here, we're specifying 12 dash, which specifies fire rating and 56 dash, which specifies electric latch retraction. Next, we always specify the series or the line. In this example, it's, since it's for exit devices, the 8800 is a rim series, is, an, is a rim exit device for the 80 series from Sargent. Next is the function. The function is how the inside and outside trim work together and how the lock operates. There can only be one function per lock. In this example, we're calling out a 13 function. That's a storefront function where the key locks and unlocks the outside lever. Next, we always specify the rows or the discussion first. With our, e, with our exit devices, the ET trim is our standard discussion. And then it's followed by the lever design you want, followed by the hand 
and the finish. As I mentioned, all the products are the same way. So in the next example, we have mortise locks here. In the example, we are specifying two options. The first one is the DG1 key system, and they're also requesting a request to exit switch. Next, followed by the series, which is the 8200 series mortise lock, followed by the line, which is the 13, or excuse me, followed by the function. In this example, the 13 function, and once again, the key locks and unlocks the outside trim. That's one nice thing is the function numbers do remain the same for the different product lines. Next, we have the rows or the discussion. In this case, it's the LN rows that we're specifying, followed by an MM lever for a right-hand door, and we're looking for a 26D finish. Next example, cylindrical locks. Here we're specifying options first. 28 dash is a very good option to know because with Sargent cylindrical locks, it's good to know that our standard strike for our cylindrical locks is the T-strike and not many people are using the T-strike any longer. To get the full four and seven eighths in strike or the 808 anti-strike, you need to specify 28 dash. It doesn't change the price at all, but it does need to be specified. Next, we're specifying RX because you can get requests to exit switches with, uh, with the cylindrical locks, followed by the line. In this case, it's the 10 line lock, followed by the function. An 05 function is a office function, followed by the rows or the discussion. Here it's an LN row, excuse me, an L rows, which is a three and a half inch diameter rows with an L lever handle for a left hand door with a 15 finish this time. And for our next example, door closers. Once again, options are always specified first. DA specifies delayed action. Next, we specify the series. We do have a number of different series. Here we're calling out Sargent's cast iron door closer, which is the 281. There's really not functions with the door closers. It's more or less the arm that you're gonna be ordering with it. And that's what's specified next. In this case here, we're ordering a P10 arm, followed by the hand and the finish. Okay, so all Sargent products are ordered pretty much the same way. And once again, an option is any variation to the standard product offering. And keep in mind, you can have a huge number of options without any problem. The product I'm showing you here is a true product. What we're listing here is an XC cylinder with large format interchangeable core cylinders, with cylinder dogging, with a latch bolt monitoring, with outside lever monitoring, with electric latch retraction, with a photoluminescent touchpad on a rim exit device, with a storefront function, with an ET trim and an MA lever, 32D for a right hand reverse bevel. So you can have a huge number of options. Normally we list the options in numerical order, but it really doesn't make a difference. Okay, but you can have a huge number of options. We wanted to leave, we wanted to leave options up to the customer on what they wanted to have with their particular product. So next we're going to take a good look at the 80 series catalog. When you look at the 80 series catalogs, when you're looking at the parts page or the product catalog section, you're going to see the product, it's always laid out this way. You always want to see the two pages together. So on the right hand side, we're calling out the 8800 series rim exit device. On the far left hand side, excuse me, on the far, I had those backwards. On the far right hand side, you find the mechanical and the electrical options. So if you're ever looking for a particular option for a Sergeant X device, you can always find, look for it there first because if it's not in that option list, it's not gonna be available with that series of exit devices. Okay, so the mechanical options are listed separate from the cylinder options. The mechanical options also include the electrical options, okay? Keep in mind in this industry, one and three quarters is the standard door thickness. So if you're putting Sargent hardware on any door other than a one and three quarter inch thick door, you need to specify 31 dash. What 31 dash tells Sargent is that this is a special door thickness and to look for additional information. So an example of how that would be specified would be 31 dash 8815, which is a passage function, ET trim with a J lever, 32D finish, and here we're calling out the two inch door thickness. So the door thickness does need to be specified. 31 dash tells the order entry, look for additional information. 
keep in mind that's very, very critical because it does change things. Because keep in mind, most of our trim is through bolted. And if you go with the thicker door, it's gonna change how long the through bolts need to be. Also it can change the cylinder length and other options also. Since options are so prevalent with Sargent, there are so many options, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a good look at all of the options available with the Sargent products. So first we're gonna start off with the 10 line. As we know in this industry, as I just mentioned, one and three quarter inches is the standard door thickness. But if you ever wanna use the 10 line lock on a residential door, which is normally one and three eighths, there you're gonna specify one dash. One dash is for a one and three eighths inch th door thickness. Also in this industry, the standard back set is two and three quarter inches, but we do offer other back sets for some of our cylindrical locks. So for example, if you wanted a residential back set, which is two and three eighths, you would specify 20 dash. Say if you wanted a three and three quarter inch back set, that would be specified as a 23 dash. And if you wanted a five inch back set, that's gonna be specified as a 25 dash. So you can always specify whatever backs that you would like. As I mentioned, this is the standard strike for the 10 line lock. This is the 800 series curve lip strike. This is most often used with wooden frames and not off, wooden frames are not used that often. So most of the time you're gonna you wanna use this strike here. To get this strike here, you need to specify 28 dash to get the 808 strike. And this is standard and what's used in the industry today. Also, if you want, say, security torque head screws, you would specify 36 dash. You can also get spanner head screws for additional security. Also, for the 10 line lock, if you need to get a three quarter inch latch bolt throw, just so you know, to be a grade one cylindrical lock, the latch bolt throw has to be at least a half of an inch. But when you're using a, a cylindrical lock and a pair of double doors that are fire rated, because the bevel is doubled, that you need to have a longer latch bolt throw. So on pairs of fire rated doors, you're required to have a three quarter inch latch bolt throw. And then that's why this is available. So there, in those cases, you would specify 41 dash. Okay. Let's look at, look at some more options. The first one we have is lead lined options. So if you want your inside and outside rows and your latch assembly lead lined, you can get that. That's gonna be used in x-ray rooms, areas where you have a lot of radiation. Next, we have handicap warnings. We have two different types. The first type is 75, 76, and 77, and that creates mill grooves on the inside. Handicaps warnings are there to notify someone that there's something dangerous on the other side of the door, not to rush through the door blindly. So for example, 75 is gonna be for just the inside lever, 76 is just the outside lever, and 77 would specify both levers to have the grooves on both levers. We also offer an abrasive coating on this. The abrasive coating is specified with an 85 for inside, 86 for outside only, or if you want it on both levers, it's specified as an 87. One thing with Sargent's 10 line locks and our, the Sargent locks is that our standard lock lever is a rigid lever. So when the outside lever is locked, the lever is gonna be rigid. But occasionally you may need to have a freewheeling lever and Sargent's does offer freewheeling levers. Freewheeling levers means that the lever rotates when it's in the locked position. This is an anti-vandal feature. With Sargent, you can also get MicroShield, which is an antimicrobial finish, and that's specified as an SG. And in case I didn't mention it, the FW, or freewheeling is specified with an FW. As I mentioned earlier, with the 10 line locks, you can also get it with a request to exit switch. So if you wanna get it with a request to exit switch, you're gonna specify RX. Also, the wrought box, that's a WBS. The wrought box is actually the box that goes behind the strike. And normally this is built into the strike and it's attached to the strike. But occasionally on older frames, you may not have this wrought box strike or in less expensive frames, you may not have a built-in wrought box strike. So you can get it as part of the product. It's absolutely free when you order with the product. And the nice thing about this wrought box strike is this is what it's covering up, is this wooden construction underneath it, which isn't really, Nice to see. The other nice thing about the raw box strike is gonna make sure that the latch bolt extends fully. Okay, and that's critical for the guarding mechanism. Next, we're gonna look at the options available for the Sergeant mortise locks. 
once again, one and three quarter inches is standard thickness in this industry. But if you want to use it on a residential door, you would specify one dash. With Sargent, our standard hubs are steel and are very, very strong. But if you want to get stainless steel hubs opposed to the standard steel hubs, you can get that. In those cases, you would specify three dash. And the only reason you might want to use that is if it's going to be used in a highly corrosive environment, like say if it's going to be used at the beach or on board a ship or something that's going to be sailing on the ocean. That's where that may be useful. With Sargent, our standard strike for our mortise lock is at the curve lip strike that I'm showing you right there. But if for some reason you want to order a flat lip strike, you can order a flat lip strike and that's specified as a 23 dash. You can also order an open back strike with our mortise locks also. That is specified as an OBS. And once again, if you're looking for the raw box strike, that's going to be specified as WBS. As I mentioned before, in this industry, standard door thickness is one and three quarter inches. So if you're ever ordering anything for a door thicker than one and three quarter inches, always specify 31 dash and the actual door thickness, which is critical. And once again, for our mortise locks, we have security torque head screws specified as a 36 dash and spanner head screws specified as a 72, excuse me, as a 37 dash. For sergeants, indicators have become a bigger and bigger thing in today's society so people can have their privacy and such. Sergeant has developed some new indicators and I wanted to give you a quick look at the indicators now. So let's take a look. Producing the new status indicator option for mortise locks from Asa Aploy Group Brands, Corbin Ruswin and Sargent. This new offering is compatible with the industry-leading Corbin Ruswin ML2000 series and Sargent 8200 series mortise locks. The status indicator has a viewing window 25% larger than industry norms, which clearly shows whether the door is locked or unlocked, occupied or vacant, with text, color and symbols. With a large window prominently placed for maximum visibility, the status indicator provides instant reassurance and security you can see. The indicator option accommodates many applications within commercial environments, including gender-neutral restrooms, private areas for nursing mothers, and quiet rooms for employee meditation and mindfulness. By informing users that the room is in use before they attempt to enter, the status indicator prevents interruption or awkwardness. Also ideal for classrooms, the status indicator allows for easy confirmation that the door is secured in emergency or lockdown situations. Optional engraving further reinforces which direction to turn the key or thumb turn for locking. The patent pending curved design allows visibility up to 180 degrees, confirming that the door is locked from any angle. Also, a reflective coating on the indicator window allows for visibility in low light conditions, providing peace of mind that the door is locked and secure. With retrofitting capabilities, you can easily upgrade any current Corbin Ruswin or Sargent mortise lock to include the status indicator, minimizing installation time and labor costs. The upgrade utilizes the existing door prep, leaving no exposed holes, and a lock that is long-lasting and secure. The status indicator can also be customized to suit your needs. With custom engraving and a variety of colors, fonts, and icons for the indicator window, you can easily provide added security without limiting design. This new option from Corbin Ruswin and Sargent offers a solution for a multitude of applications from classrooms to commercial spaces, giving you security at a glance. For more information on the status indicator, visit CorbinRuswin.com and SargentLock.com. Producing the okay. Here's a couple other looks at the, uh, the indicators. Here I'm showing you the sectional indicators, and here's the full escutcheon as an indicator. Keep in mind, when you're ordering the full escutcheon, you're not specifying a rose because the full escutcheon incorporates the indicator while when you're ordering the sectional one, you will be specifying a rose. And part of the reason we got into this now is because we're talking about options, and this adds a lot more options to our selection. 
what I'm showing you here are these are the options if you want it for just the outside of the door. So you don't want any wording on the inside door. You're, look, you're looking for an indicator just on the outside of the door. That's going to be a V10, V20, V30, and so forth, depending on what you want written on it and depending on the color that you're looking for. If you're looking for an indicator just for the inside of the door, then it's going to be either an V01, a V03, a V04, or a V06, depending on which one you're looking for. And once again, that's going to change what's written on it and the color of it. Okay, <clears throat> so if you're ever ordering with a full discussion, the way it's going to be ordered, say if you wanted to order the V10, so you have an indicator just on the outside of the door, that's going to be specified as a V10-8200, and whatever function here we're specifying a classroom security function, and here we're specifying the new full discussion as a VN1, and we're specifying a J lever with the VN1 discussion. Right hand reverse bevel, 26D finish. And if you're looking for a sectional trim, it's gonna be specified in this manner. Once again, you still, in this example here, we're using a V20, which is just an indicator on the outside of the door, followed by the series. Okay, and here it's an 8266, which is a bathroom function. And but here, don't forget, we knit, we're specifying an LN rose with a J lever because you do have to specify a rose because this is sectional trim. And lastly, if you want double indicators, you can always get that. And that's going to be specified with a V11, V21, V33 shown here. And that's going to change what's written there and the colors. Keep in mind, we also have engraving optional. So if you want to have it engraved on just the outside of the door, it's EMA. For just the inside of the door, it's EMB, and for both sides of the door, it's EMC. And that would be specified like here. So VMA would specify just for the outside of the door that they wanted engraving. And in this example, they would be looking for engraving on both sides of the door. Okay. This is an indicator Sargent has had for some time. This is specified as a 49 dash indicator, and they've also had a 50 dash indicator for quite some time. Next, I wanted to go over some of the electrical options available. So if you want to get deadbolt monitoring with the Sergeant Mortis locks, you would specify DX. If you want to get latch bolt monitoring, it's going to be specified as an LX. And if you want to specify request to exit, that's going to be specified as an RX. And lastly, if you want uh, the electroluminescent or the Sarguide luminescent WT discussion, that's going to be specified as a TL. When it comes to Sargent's mortise locks, the standard mortise lock, the 8200, is a lever lock, which means you have levers on both sides of the door. The 8200 has a sister lock, which is the 7800, which is a knob lock, which is strictly knobs. So if you ever tried to put knobs on an 8200 series lock, it would be really hard to rotate because we have heavy duty springs in there. But if you ever need to use a knob and a lever combination, you can get that from Sargent. So for a 68 dash, it's going to specify a lever handle on the outside and a knob on the inside. And if you want it the other way around, you want a lever handle on the inside and a knob on the outside, it's going to be specified as a 69 dash. And once again, you can get it leather uh, lead lined. So if it's going to be used in an x-ray room or an area with a lot of radiation. We spoke about this already. The abrasive coatings are also available for our mortise locks for either the grooves or the abrasive coatings themselves. And Sargent also offers a van anti-vandal trim. This is the anti-vandal trim. Keep in mind, this is, I know it's a trim, but it's specified as an option. It's specified as an option because you still need to specify a lever and rose for the inside of the door to get out. And that's why it's an option. Okay. So that's where that comes from. Once again, you can get MicroShield with our products. Our standard thumb turn, this is our standard thumb turn, which stands a full one and three eighths. It does meet ADA requirements, but we do offer this larger thumb turn. This would be specified with an LB. It's 40% larger than our standard thumb turn. But we also came out with some other new things, which is our T1, T2, and T3. What that's gonna change is the actual piece that you hold on to. So then the piece that you hold on to when you rotate the thumb turn is either going to be T1, T2, or T3. Now you have the option if you don't want to just have the standard. Okay, the back plate that you see on it is always going to match the hardware that you're installing with or the discussion you're installing with. So if you're going to be using 
uh, square rows, you would get the square back plate on it, okay? So if you were using around rows, you would get these plates here. And the whole idea is that you could have a whole family of parts where everything matches beautifully. So once again, if you had square roses, then you would have these square back plates on your thumb turns. Okay, and that way you can complete a whole series of design combinations. If you want dual radius on back plates, once again, that would be come with the TO and the TR roses. And if you wanted just the bevel angle, that's going to be with the CO and the CR roses. So there are a lot of options available with the mortise locks. But now it's time to take a look at exit devices. Okay. So with exit devices, we'll take a quick look, run through them. 12 dash specifies a fire rated exit device. 14 dash specifies a brass sliding bottom bolt, and this is for the 8700. This would be used in an area where it's going to be highly corrosive, like a lot of salt and stuff. The standard bolt is stainless steel, but this is brass and brass won't corrode and that's why it's used in marine environments. So a 14 dash is, is how that would be specified. If you want cylinder dogging, that's going to be specified as a 16 dash, right? Keep in mind, if you want to order less dogging, a panic exit device is always going to come with dogging unless you want to order less dogging and there you're going to specify LD and it's going to come to you less dogging. If you're looking for without the touchpad, without the Lexon touchpad, that's going to be specified as a 19 dash. And one more time, if you're ordering a mortise lock exit device and you want to order that with a flat lip strike opposed to the standard curve lip strike, that's going to be specified as a 23 dash. The options do remain consistent throughout the different series. So once again, we have 31 dash, which we're not going to talk about again, 36 dash and 37 dash for the security head screws. Here's a new one. Here we have um, the flush end cap. Sergeant standard end cap is a wraparound end cap because if you do have to cut it in the field, it will cover up any imperfections nicely, but they also offer a flush mount end cap also. And they also offer the 49 dash indicator. This indicator on the exit device will tell you if the outside or if the outside trim is locked or unlocked. Okay, and that would be specified as a 49 dash. Next, we're going to talk about the different electrical options available with the Sargent exit devices. So if you want to monitor the latch bolt, that's going to be specified as a 53 dash. If you want to monitor the outside lever, that's going to be specified as a 54 dash. And if you want to monitor the push rail, or that's also known as a request to exit switch, that's going to be specified as a 55 dash. This is where there is a difference between mortise locks and exit devices. They use different electrical option numbers. So keep that in mind. Okay. Continuing on, they also offer a delayed uh, electric latch retraction device is a 56 dash. Sargent offers only a motorized electric latch retraction. It's a great device and has a five year mechanical warranty. You can also get the electric latch retraction with hex key dogging by specifying 56 dash HK. They also offer a delayed egress device that's used in conjunction with an electromagnet. And a couple more, 58 dash is electric dogging. That's basically it needs to be pushed in manually the first time and will stay electrically dogged until the electricity is removed. That's a 58 dash. They also have delayed egress device, self-contained delayed egress devices. That's available as a 59 dash. And they also offer Boca delayed egress devices. According to NFP 101, you have to have, after someone goes through a delayed egress device, someone manually has to go over there with the key and reset it according to NFP 101. What a Boca device does is a Boca device is used with a door position switch and it allows the device to reset itself automatically. So someone doesn't have to go over to the door and that's a Boca device. Sargent also offers alarmed exit devices and these are self-contained alarm exit devices. It operates on a nine volt battery and they also offer the electroluminescence. Once again, they also they offer the tactile warnings for the outside levers and the touch pads. That's there. If you wanna order your exit devices less bottom rod, that's gonna be specified with an NB for less bottom rod. And they also offer micro shield, of course. And if you're looking for photoluminescence, it's specified as a PL. 
Door closers. Just a few options here. We're going to run through these really quick. You've heard of most of these already. The first one is a 31 dash special door thickness, more than one and three quarter inches thick. Specify the door thickness. Next, you have security torque head screws, followed by 74 dash, which is less lead line, which is available for the mortise locks and the cylindrical locks. Next, we have ABC. This is one you probably aren't familiar with. ABC is, stands for advanced back check. What that does, your normal back check takes place around the 70 degree point. ABC moves the back check up about 15 degrees so it incorporates it soon. So it incorporates it sooner. This would be used in areas where you're going to expect a lot of violence where someone's out, kick, people are kicking the door open and stuff. It's to protect the door closer. Okay, our next option is clear powder coat, CPC. We also offer a delayed action. Delayed action will hold the door open for up to 20 seconds. During the 20 seconds, the door will slowly close, but it holds the door open. This is a great option for internal doors where you bring a lot of carts and gurneys through. It's not a great suggestion for exterior doors because it does hold the door open for a long time. Next, if you want an ABS cover, that's gonna be specified as an EC. And if you want a metal cover, that's gonna be an MC for a metal cover. They also offer a special rust inhibitor. That's specified as SRI. That's a special rust inhibitor. And if you're not aware of it, sergeant's door closers normally come with wood screws and machine screws. But if you want through bolt it, you need to specify TB and then you'll be able to through bolt the sergeant door closer. Next, we're going to take a look at cylinders. We're going to take a quick look at the differences between large and small format cylinders. So on the left-hand side, I'm showing you a 63 dash. That is Sargent's large format interchangeable core cylinders. On the left-hand side, on the right-hand side is a 73 dash. And that is the best design. This is considered the universal design. And if you're not familiar with how an interchangeable core works, here's a quick look. So this is an interchangeable core. They're gonna show you what's inside the cylinder before they get started. So these are the different components here. And that's the part that locks it inside. So once it's all together, what the first key they're gonna install is the standard change key, which is the average key that an average person would have. Okay. In the first chamber, you see a gold pin there. That gold pin is a master pin. And in the third and fourth chambers, you also see gold pins there. That's for the control sleeve, okay? So that created a shear line so you could rotate the cylinder. The next key they're gonna put in is the master key. That's the next higher level key. And in this case here, the master pin is above the shear line opposed to being below the shear line. And the next key we're gonna show you creates a whole new shear line because this is the control key. So it has to create a shear line for the control key to allow the whole core to be removed. In this case here, the key is only rotated about 15 degrees and it allows you to pull the core out of the cylinder. And this is how it's a quick way of changing over buildings, different classrooms and such. And that's how an interchangeable core works. So with Sargent, if you want to get a plastic disposable core with Sargent's large format interchangeable core, you're going to specify 60 dash. If you want to get your final product and you want to use Sargent's large format interchangeable core, you're going to specify 63 dash. And during the construction phase of the building, it's not a bad idea to get construction cores. This way, during the construction phase of the building, the keys that they're using are completely different keys than the final building. So therefore, no one can get a hold of any of the final keys. Once the building is turned over, these cores, the 64 dash brass cores are removed and sent back to the factory and the final product is installed. One thing that's always good to remember, you always have to order the control key with it. The control key does not come with it standard. So the control key always, need to be, always needs to be ordered. Next, 70 dash is the small form interchangeable core. So if you wanted to buy that with a plastic disposable core, that's going to be a 70 dash. If you want construction core, that's going to be a 72 dash. And the construction core, okay, the construction core with the large form interchangeable core was brass in color. This one is going to have blue dike on it. So it has a blue dye on it. And that means it's a construction core. And those would be sent back to the factory once the building is turned over. And you would put in the final product. And in this case here, 
we're specifying a 73 dash. 73 dash specifies the final product. 65 dash, 73 dash specifies an uncombinated cylinder. That means it's going to be the cores are for field keying, no pins, springs, or key blanks are provided, and there will be no, no logo on the face of the cylinders. With the small form interchangeable core, you can order these as either six pin or seven pin. Six pin is standard. If you want seven pin, you would be specifying seven P, as in 73-7P. We do offer the small format interchangeable core in two of Sargent's keyways, 4A and 4B. The 4A is a two-step system, but we do offer a number of different best uh, keyways, as you see there, A, B, C, D. So we do offer quite a variety. And one thing to be aware of is that Sargent's will extend any key system after receipt of the existing bidding list from the end user. So it allows you to expand the building's format using the same master key system. Okay, these cores are available in six or seven pin. Six and seven pin cores use the same mortise and rim housings. One more time, six and seven pin cores use the same mortise and rim housings. When it comes to key and lever cores, they require different tail pieces, okay? And one more time, the cores have to be ordered separately. Next, we're going to talk quickly about some of Sargent's specialized cylinders. This is Sargent's signature key system. It offers additional blocking, blocking bars at the bottom of the cylinder. If you like this option for additional security, it's specified as a 10 dash. You can get this as lost ball construction. We'll talk about that shortly. That's a 21 dash or a 10 dash, 21 dash. And once again, as we just talked about, if you want to get this, the signature with large format interchangeable core, that would be specified as a 10 dash, 63 dash. If you want XC, XC is the, another type of key system for, for Sargent. It offers an additional locking point, as you can see there. The standard is specified as an 11 dash. Once again, you can get that with lost ball construction by specifying the 21 dash, and I'll explain that shortly. But also one nice thing too is that the XC key system is backwards compatible with existing conventional key systems. So for example, say if you had a sergeant school and it was a conventional key system and you want to upgrade the building by putting higher security on the outside of the building, with both the signature and the XC key systems, you can upgrade the building with the new, with either the XC or the signature by replacing the outside cylinders, but you can have these new cylinders keyed to the existing master key system. So these keys will continue to operate all of the cylinders inside of the building, so those don't have to be changed, but only the signature keys or the XC key will operate the signature or the S or the XC cylinders. So those, someone with an older key will not be able to operate these two cylinders, therefore they could not get in. That's what means when it's backwards compatible. So the XC is available with both large format interchangeable core. You can order it with the plastic disposable core, the final product, which is an 11-63, or if you want it with the construction cores. The XC is also available with small format interchangeable cores. Okay, and that's gonna be specified as an 11-73 or whichever one. So once again, you can order it with plastic disposable cores, you can order it with the construction cores, which is a 72, so that'd be an 11 72, and that would only be available with seven pin. Okay, same thing. So if you wanted to order the final product, it's going to be an 11 73 7 pin because it's only available as a seven pin with the XC key system. And one more time, you can get this uncombinated. Okay, I know you've been waiting for this. This is a construction ball lost wafer or lost ball design. The lost wafer and the ball, lost ball design are basically the same way, same idea. So basically what you have here is little wafers on, in, in the chamber, okay? With the construction master key system, the wafers are below the shear line. So the, so the wafer is below the shear line, okay? When the building is finally turned over and you take the key that's finally going to operate that building and you stick it into the cylinder, so that's the change key, the wafer now moves above the shear line and when, and when you rotate the cylinder, that little wafer or the little balls will drop into the side pocket on the side of the barrel there. 
And therefore, when you remove that change key, the key that was the construction key before will no longer work because it won't create a shear line. So once you remove this key, the wafers are on the side of the barrel and now the construction master keying will not work at all. Okay, and that's how that works. So that's specified as a 21 dash. And as you saw, you can get that with XC. You can get it with signature, which is a 10 dash. And you'll be able to get this with degree, which we'll be talking about in a moment. Okay, this is not recommended for DG3 key systems or any system where strict control and management is enforced. They also offer what they call a 22 dash. This is a split key system, and this is not something we recommend. We still offer it, but it's not something that's recommended. During the construction phase of the building, you have just a half key in there, and the workers are walking around with a half key. So the first, the first part of the share line is complete. When they take their half key and put it in there, that's how they would get in. When the building is turned over, then those half keys have to be pulled out of each of the barrels one at a time, then the standard key will operate. This is the split uh, key design. We don't really recommend this. Really quick, we do offer KISO. KISO is available as KISO F1 and standard KISO. Here's a good visual of the differences. The KISO standard does not have reduced areas here, while the KISO F1 has a reduced area and the KISO F1, the barrel is extended out, okay? So that's, you would specify an 82 dash or an F1 82 if you were looking for conventional KISO cylinders. KISO is also available with um, large, with interchangeable cores. So once again, if you want to provide it with interchangeable cores, it's gonna be an 81 dash. The final product is gonna be an F183. And for the construction course, it's going to be an 84 dash. Next degree, this is Sargent's latest key system. This is patented until 2027. This utilizes a whole new locking system. So what features, so first off, degree key system is available with all different types of cylinders, mortar cylinders, rim cylinders, key and lever cylinders, and interchangeable core, large format interchangeable core. The common features for all degree cylinders is that they are all six pin and bump resistant is standard on DG1 fixed core cylinders and DG2 and DG3. The other thing that makes this unique is that it has a utility patent on it. Okay, therefore nobody can get these keys, get, get hold of these keys or reproduce these keys legally. The next two higher levels are DG2 and DG3. What we have here is we have a patented side locking bar, which gives you additional locking points in addition to the six pins on top. The other variation with DG2 and DG3 is you have angled bottom pins, which means you have to, the pins either have to be right, left, or center. Also DG2 and DG3 have geographic exclusivity, which means that same key system is not gonna be set up in the local area. And what makes DG3 difference, which is the highest level, it, mean, it means that it's UL437 and it has been certified, okay? These are manufactured with hardened, hardened drill resistant inserts in both the body and the barrel that you see here. And that's why it's the highest level. So DG3 is the highest level, DG2 and DG1 is the lowest level, okay? When it comes to DG1, DG2, and DG3, if you're looking for any of the three levels, that's how it's going to be specified, DG1, DG2, or DG3. If you want to order the, the lost wafer for construction, there you're going to specify a 21 dash is going to give you the lost ball construction. If you're looking for plastic disposable cores, then you're going to specify 60 dash, whichever degree, DG1, DG2, or DG3. If you want your final product to be a large format interchangeable core degree core, then it's gonna be 63 dash. 63 dash is Sargent's large format. And DG1, DG2, or DG3 is gonna specify the level. And the neat thing about this, and this is available with interchangeable core UL437. So you can get DG3 UL437 with interchangeable core. During the construction phase of the building, you would order, if you want a construction master key, it's gonna be specified as a 64 dash. And 65 dash, once again, means uncombinated. 
when it comes to cylinders, you can also order your cylinders buck resistant. You can order your products from Sargent's less cylinders by specifying LC. And a number of our products you can also get with Schlage C and Schlage E keyways. Also, a number of our products you can get to accept a Schlage cylinder, or you can get to accept a Schlage large format interchangeable core. So it's very versatile. So let's take a quick look at the catalog. This is Sargent's 80 series catalog. Sargent offers a complete series of uh, exit devices. And here they are. We have the 80 series, the 90 series, the 20 series, and the 30 series. The first digit always represents the series. The second digit always represents the type of exit device it is. Okay, so a nine would be a mortise lock exit device, and that would be a wide style. An eight would be a wide style rim exit device. A five would be a narrow style rim exit device. With sergeants, when we talk about a wide style we're talking about the vertical member of the door and we're talking about a four and a half inch style. A narrow style for a concealed vertical rod can be as small as one and three quarter inches thick. So let's take a quick look at the devices. So this is a wide style rim exit device and a narrow style rim exit device. They're both 80 series. These are the mortise lock exit devices, the 8900 series and the 8300 series. Then we have our two point latching surface vertical rod. And if you want to order less bottom rod, that's going to be specified as an NB. When it comes to our concealed vertical rods, it's always important that you specify the material that the, door, that the hardware is going to be installed on. So you would specify MD for a metal door, AD for an aluminum door, and WD for a wood door. So the 8600 are the wide style and the 8400 are the narrow style. So let's quickly look at the catalog again. Here's the 80 series catalog. Right in the beginning of the table of contents, we do list the products here and we do have visuals for that. As I mentioned in the beginning, you always look at the two pages together. At the very top, you're gonna to have the features followed by the door size, the rail size, and all the electrical options. So all your electrical options are gonna be listed here. Then we're gonna show you the different strikes that are available. At the top of the second page is always gonna be an ordering string. And this is an ordering string which we've discussed already. So let's get into the catalog. So in this section of the catalog here, the first thing that you see are the Sargent function numbers. This is how you're gonna order Sargent functions. One thing you'll notice here that there's two tens here, but when you look right next to it, you have the ANSI numbers, which is an 01 and an 02. The reason there are two tens is because if you order the exit device without any trim on the outside of the door, that isn't technically an 01. And if you order the trim with just a pull on the outside of the door, that is technically an O2. For sergeants, if you don't specify a trim, that means it's going to be an O1. And if you specify a trim to pull the door open, it means it's going to be an O2. Next are the ANSI numbers. These are great for cross-referencing between various manufacturers because sometimes the descriptions can be pretty tough to understand. So here's an example. Up top is a mortise lock exit device from Sargent. It's, this is an office function. It's specified as an ANSI F04. At the bottom of the page is from the Schlage catalog. Once again, this is an office or inner entry lock, and it's an F04. By knowing that they're both F04s, these two locks should operate exactly the same. Keep in mind that all functions aren't available, all functions are not available for all series. On the left-hand side, these are the functions available for the rim exit device. But on the right-hand side, those are the options available for the surface vertical rod exit devices. And some of the options are missing. So keep in mind, not all options, or excuse me, not all functions are available with all the different series. Okay, and all of these series are missing. In the center description here, it tells you how it operates. And it also tells you what size cylinder you need on here with Sargent. So a 34 is a rim cylinder and a 41 is a mortise cylinder. Lastly is the type of cylinder. So this is the ANSI designation for the type. So a type one is a rim exit device. Here I'm just showing you a brief list of the different types according to ANSI. This is directly from ANSI BHMA's standards. At the end of this section of the catalog is a standard ordering string. One thing with Sargent, Sargent, with most manufacturers, they only offer two door sizes, 36 and 48 inches, that's it. With Sargent, we offer four different door sizes. So we have an E-size door, which is for a 32-inch door, 
36 is an S size door. J is for a 42 inch door out of the box and a G is for a 48 inch door out of the box. And one really unique thing with Sargent's is we will cut every exit device to the exact door with at no additional charge or lead time. Nobody else in the industry does that. Okay, here is the ET trend. Once again, we always specify the discussion followed by the lever design. And what I'm showing you here is that we do offer a wide variety of levers. So you have our standard levers, which have a single letter designation. We have our studio collection levers, which have a two letter designation. And then we also have our Gramercy and our Grant Park, which have three and four digit designations. Okay. I'm just gonna skip over a couple slides that I was questioning whether I was gonna skip. I'm gonna skip these over really quick so we can just, let me just go past this. Okay. Continuing back with the ordering string. Keep in mind, you always want to specify the hand. So always specify the hand, whether it's right hand reverse bevel or left hand reverse bevel. Next, we have the finishes. The finishes are specified in the lower right hand corner. And with Sargent, we'll accept either the US finishes or the ANSI finishes. Okay. Keep in mind, anytime you order anything with vertical rods, it's very important that you always include the door height. Okay. What is the AFF? AFF stands for above the finish floor and Sargent's standard AFF is 41 inches. So we're always expecting you to mount the exit device at 41 inches. So we're going to cut, cut the top rod and the bottom rod for a 48 inch mounting height for whatever door size you tell us. And that's why that always needs to be included. So this is just emphasizing, make sure you include the door width, the door height, excuse me, the door height is critical and you don't have to include the AFF if it's a standard AFF. So if the AFF is 41 inches, you do not need to include that. Next is our thumb pieces. Okay, this is the bottom section here. When you're looking at this section here, there's only one thing that you really need to know, and that's the note that's right above it. Basically, this is what it reads. Use the three letter designation when ordering the exit device with the trim and use the six letter designation when ordering the exit device without the trim. So for an example, if I wanted to order this trim with the exit device, I would order something like an 8804 F size rail. MSL will give me that trim for a right hand reverse bevel door 32D finish. But if I just wanted to order that trim, then I would need to specify 814 MSL right hand in the finish. Okay. So let's get into the price book. We're running a little bit long. So here's the price book. This is the basic layout of the price book. It shows the table of contents in the beginning here. Okay. When you always look at the price book, always look at the two pages together. Options always have to be on the left hand side. The products are always on the right. Our, our options give you a lot of information. In this example here, we're showing you here 12 dash is for a fire rated option. And right here, it's telling you, you can't get that with cylinder dogging or hex key dogging. So it has a lot of valuable information. This is where our trim is listed in our price book. So you always, one thing you always want to find out with our products when you're ordering is what lever design do you have? And that's critical. So in this first section here, this is standard and studio collection levers. And all of these are going to be grouped in the same pricing. Next are all the Gramercy, Worcester Park, and Grant Park series lever handles. And those are going to be in the same price category. Then all the thumb pieces are in the same price categories, along with all the pulls. When you look at the next section of the price book, what you want to look at next is the finishes. So following down from that first column there, it's broken up into two finishes for the standard and the, and the, and the coastal series and the studio collection levers. You have finishes either 10BE, 32D, and BSP and WSP are one price, and then all the other finishes are another price. So you need to find out what lever design you have, what finish you have, and then lastly, what function. One nice thing with Sargent is all of those functions in that yellow square are all the same price. The only ones that are different is the one that has no outside trim or the double cylinder function. That one also has a different price. When you're looking at the thumb pieces, certain functions are not available. So make sure there's a price matching up with the function number that you're looking for. And then looking at the catalog, this just shows you our freewheeling options with our electrical options and our general notes. 
We're just going to do one quick pricing question, question or example to show you how it's done. So here we're looking for, this is a hardware set for opening E4. And here the customer is looking for a Sargent 12-56-8813 with an ET trim with an MA lever, right hand reverse bevel, 32D for a 32 inch door. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna go into is we're gonna go into the price book, find out where the 8800 series are listed. Once we do that, we're gonna make sure our options are on the left-hand side and our products are on the right-hand side. Remember the first thing we wanted to determine is what lever design you have. It's an MA lever. If you don't remember, an MA lever is a studio collection lever, which means it's gonna be in this first category here. The next thing you wanna look at is what function you have. So here we're showing you all the functions. And in our, actually, we're showing you the function. In our example here, we're using a 13 function. So a 13 function underneath the finish that we're looking for, which is gonna be the 32D finish, is gonna have a two, 200 and, excuse me, 2,048 price. That's gonna be the base price. So that's a 32D finish. One night, other nice thing with Sargent is that the rail size doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if it's going on an E size rail, a J size rail, a G size rail, it doesn't change the price. So the only thing you have to consider is the lever design, the finish and the type of exit device. Then you have to add in the options. So next we're gonna to go to the option page. We wanted a 12 dash, which is specified as a one, specified as a 12 dash and then the price for that is 184. And the other one was electric latch retraction that has a, an upcharge of 856 for a total price of 3484. So you just add in the options once you get the base price. Hopefully this gave you a good idea on how to order Sargent products. I'm gonna open this up to see if we have any questions. Let's see, looks like we may have one question. Did you say the standard strike on the T, on the 10 line strike was the T strike? Yes, that's all of Sargent cylindrical locks. The standard strike is the standard T strike. Most people are using the four and seven agents anti strike. So you need to specify 28 dash to get that. I saw someone just raise their hand. I can't. I don't know how to answer you raising your hand. You have to type in a question and then I can answer it. Do we, where can I find the price books that you are using? These are the standard price books. So if you go to sergeantlock.com, you go under library, go under catalogs, and this is gonna be the price book catalog. And I believe I'm working with the latest price book catalog. If I'm not, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure it is. Do we have any other questions? Hopefully you found this somewhat enjoyable, somewhat educational good. What was that again? Okay. So uh, you would go, let's see if I can show you. So my, my sharing, stop sharing. Are you, I don't know. So basically you have to go to the Sergeant, it's sergeantlock.com is the website. Okay, sergeantlock.com is the website. And then under there, in one section of it, you're gonna look for what they call the library. And that's where they're gonna list all their instruction sheets, templates, catalogs, everything there. And in that grouping there, you are also gonna find the price book listed there. And there, that's where you can download it. The recording is not sent out to anyone. It has to, it is available online. So you would have to go to the Sargent website and there will be a link to it. And these are on the, upper right hand side is where the link is. I think we got all the questions unless there's any more, but I'd like to thank everybody once again. And keep in mind, Osablo Academy is offering numerous numbers of webinars multiple times a day. They're all free and you can always learn something. I always learn something at least. Thank you and have a great day everyone. Stay healthy and take care.